Hello, welcome to the channel. So ChatGPT seems on the surface amazing, but what is it like as a data analyst? Can it help me find the best chart for a data set like this one? And can it actually analyze the data itself and share some insights? Spoiler alert, it can only do one of those things. And for the other, don't trust it. Here's the video. Okay, this is a small data set, I grant you, but let's see how it works compared to me as an analyst. Now, this data set is actually one I've used an awful lot in the years. I ask a question, which chart would you use to visualize this data? Most people say a line chart. It's reasonable. It's A and B throughout a year. Let's say sales of A and B. Um, and here's how, as an analyst, we try and answer this question. Okay, here is sales throughout the year. That's the question. But really, most of you are probably thinking, well, break it down by A and B, because then we can see sales uh, of A and B through the year. All good. So even there, you've got a choice. Which line chart is the right one for the data set? I don't know. That's up to you to find out. But it gets more complicated than that, because this chart is answering the question, what are cumulative sales through A and B? Look, now you can see uh, B just managed to beat A at the end of the year. Awesome. Can't see that in the line chart. You can try things like stacked area charts. Now, this is great for total sales of A and B, but broken down by A and B. Awesome. So here the challenge is we've got total sales. That's very clear. And we can see whether B grew each month or didn't. But because it, A is sat on top of B, we can't actually see if A grew each month. So a stacked area chart is a reasonable thing if you're more interested in the total, but a bit confusing if you want to see the actual growth of each individual category problems with stacked areas. Sometimes, you know, you're just not interested in what happened in the middle of the year. You just want to know, in January, B was under A, and in December, it outgrew it. That's a slope chart, and it really helps focus on the start and end of a period. When you show the entire data set, it, things get noisy. Let's go down a little data viz nerdy pathway here. If the question is, what is the difference between A and B throughout the year, then this line chart isn't very good. The way the data is encoded on this chart is by the line, and the line lets us see the variance between each category between each month. That's great. That's what a line chart does. But we're trying to do the difference in this question. So instead, we can actually encode the, use the line to encode the difference. Stick the line, Remove the line going from month to month, and now encode the difference. We could even go one step further and baseline A and plot the difference between A and B throughout the year. And we can see that B outsold A in the latter months of the year. That could be a really important question and a line chart is gonna really conceal that information. Finally, some people might even say, just show me the final numbers. You don't need the entire data set. And a completely legitimate thing to do is just give me a text summary of the data set. And so as we've seen in just a couple of minutes, as an analyst, I can be dragging and dropping and playing with data very, very quickly and see that I can ask many, many different questions of this data set and get answers very quickly. Now, until recently, I've always done this and shown this slide and said, well, what would a machine do? A machine would do this because it's not intelligent enough. Or is it? Let's have a look of what ChatGPT might do with this data set. So let's get the data here. I've got this in Excel and I'm gonna to go to ChatGPT. Here we go. And I'm gonna say, what's the best chart for this data set? Now, what is cool about ChatGPT is you can paste in a cross tab. So let's see what ChatGPT can do with this. Based on the data set, a grouped bar chart, it says, with the months of the year as the x-axis and the sales as the y-axis. Uh, then it, what's it gonna do? It's, uh, chart has two bars for each month, one for A, one for B. That means we can compare sales between the two products and identify patterns. Okay, so that's good fundamental data viz advice. Color coded, add a legend, and we can do trend lines and rolling averages. And you could label it, add labels. Okay, pretty good. Let's see what that looks like in Tableau. So here I am, I'm in Tableau. 
uh, I've connected to the that same data set already, and it says a grouped bar chart. So we'll put in um, sales by month. Oh, it's already labeled. I'm going to turn the labels off. And it wants a side-by-side -side bar product. Okay, using color. So here we go. So this is pretty good. I can highlight A and see the growth and highlight B. Personally, I don't really like these group bar charts because they're a very cognitive. There's a lot of cognitive effort required in order to decode these. So let's see if ChatGPT uh, can respond to this. I don't like grouped bar charts. How else could I visualize this? Really, at this point, I'm trying to focus on seeing if ChatGPT can recommend good charts to us as analysts. Okay, we've got stacked bar charts. So the stacked bar chart is going to be similar to the stacked area chart we saw a moment ago. A line chart. It's interesting that it comes up with a line chart as second, uh, or, or I guess third chart it's recommended. I'd have thought humans might go to a line chart first. We can do a heat map. Uh, that's very good. That's, that's essentially a table, but with color-coded cells showing the biggest and smallest. Biggest and smallest values could use a color, color scale with darker colors indicating higher sales. That's good. And small multiples. Ah, right. This is useful. Ultimately, the chart type will depend on the specific insights you want to convey with the data and the preferences of your audience. Good work, ChatGPT, because I think that is the true challenge of an analyst and anybody making decisions with data. What are the insights you want to find and convey? All right, so let's go. Let's try a stacked bar chart. So we'll go back to this. And to create a stacked bar chart in chat Tableau, I just take product off the column shelf and we'll make a stack bar chart. Now we've got the same problems we saw with the stacked area chart. I can't really see if A is growing. So this is quite good. Uh, but I'll ask, are there any problems with stacked bar charts? So now I'm trying to challenge it to say, well, you gave me this recommendation. What are the downsides of this chart type you chose? What's it going to say? Stack bar charts can be useful com for comparing total sales. There are some problems to consider. Uh, it's going to be difficult to compare individual values. Ah, right, okay. So this first one, difficulty in comparing individual values, is exactly the problem I was uh, representing. But then it's coming up with a couple of others. Mip misrepresentation of data. Uh, it can exaggerate differences between products. That's possibly true. And then there's there's another one with too many segments. They can become cluttered and hard to read. That's true. I've only got two categories in this data set, but that's great general advice for stack bar charts and pie charts. And then <laughs> it's worth exploring other chart types that may be appropriate. So it is actually saying go and explore the data set and acknowledging that its recommendation is beyond what it can do. So that's pretty good. So I think so far on this small use case, that's a reasonable chart recommendation app engine. How about ChatGPT actually doing some analysis? Uh, let's ask which months did B outsell A? So this is quite a complicated question. This was the one that had the uh, dumbbell chart, which we baselined and then plotted the actual differences. Looking at the data set, we can see there are sales figures for A and B. We can compare the sales figures each month. Here are the sales figures organized by product. All right, okay, so it's giving us a bulleted list. Wow. <laughs> April, May, September, October, November, December. Should we go back and see if that is correct? 
May, September, October, November, December. April. Wow. B did not outsell A in April, as you can see here. So here's a significant problem. It's doing something that looks really impressive, but it's actually got the wrong answer. Let's just go back and check. So it's saying A 150, B 100 in April. Let's go right back to the top. There's the data I pasted in. A was 150, B was 100. So it's even put the right data in and then it's given us the wrong results. So chat GPT, this is slightly dangerous. Let's try another question. Uh, what are cumulative sales of A and B? Oh, ChatGPT, you were doing so well, and yet you've just given me the wrong thing. Okay, now look, we're getting uh, an, <laughs> a, um, an equation. So it's adding them up. 2260 and 2950. Should we see if that data is correct? Uh, let's do cumulative sales. So let's take month off. <clears throat> Break it down by picture. Uh, oop. And so it's not even added up the numbers correctly. 2260 and 2950. I don't see these numbers here or here. So I'm sorry, ChatGPT. You're playing a good game but you're not really giving me the right answers. Let's ask it if it can even produce a data set. Well, here it is producing an actual data set. I'm going to pause and let this finish. Now, this is cool. It's created a table. And in fact, it's also explained how it's done the table. That's great, right? Um, Let's see if this is actually correct. Because it's created a table of numbers, I can copy and paste this straight into my analytical tool of choice. So I'm just going to press Control V. I can't do this on the interface. So I'm going to paste. And look, there you go. We've now literally just pasted that data from ChatGPT into Tableau, where we can do some analysis. All right, I'm going to pause here and build the table just to check whether it got its sums correct, and this table is correct. Okay, so I've checked the numbers, and here we can see that in December, it has correctly, the red is ChatGPT's running total, and the blue is the actual data set. You can see they're correct. And here, when we look at B, 2460 also equals 2460. So this is a bit better in this case, when I asked it to draw a table, it correctly did, did the calculation. And you can see at the bottom, 2350, 2460 is, uh, sorry, two, uh, yeah, 2350 and 2460 are the running total of sales. But when it added them here, it just got them wrong. So this is slightly worrying. When we go back to the data set then, we ask, what would a machine do? Right, clearly it's getting cleverer. And on the surface, ChatGPT is looking incredibly powerful. But if you go down this path, 
with what we see now, the results aren't to be relied on. And therefore, a machine can augment you, but you as a human being are the best person to analyze this data set. All right, so there you go. That is my exploration of ChatGPT. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like this, do subscribe. There's plenty more on the way. Take care.